Now normally I place seeds in the three categories. The seeds that need to be planted six to eight weeks before your last frost date, and you want to plant them in trays, indoors. Now my greenhouse is not heated, so I'm going to be planting them in here, but they're going inside my house. My second category of seeds are seeds that really, you can wait until after your last frost date and plant them straight into the ground. Seeds like corn, green beans, those do just fine going straight into the ground. And then there's a third category of seeds, which I kind of consider in between. Like okra, watermelon, more watermelon, cantaloupe, cucumbers. These guys here, you could plant them directly into the ground after your last frost date, or you could put them in seeds starting kits. Then there's my third category of seeds. Seeds that I could plant in the ground or I could put in seed starting trays like this. But they grow so fast that I'm not gonna put these cucumbers into these seed starting trays six to eight weeks before my last frost date. They're just gonna grow too fast and get too leggy. Now I haven't decided if I'm gonna put these in trays or not, but it's gonna be maybe three weeks before my last frost date at the earliest or I'm just gonna plant them straight into the ground. Now for best results for seeds like these, I'm gonna start with a seed starting mix. You notice I didn't say dirt or topsoil. I'm going to start with a basic seed starting mix. And no, this video isn't sponsored, but this is what I'm gonna use for these. It's quick, it's easy, it's not too expensive. Now in the future, I will be doing a video on how to make your own seed starting mix. But for now, I need to get these seeds into this seed starting tray. I'm going to spread my seed starting mix through the tray. So once you have your seed started mixing the trays, you want to read and see how deep you need to plant your seeds. Now, fortunately, my tomatoes and my peppers only need to go down about a quarter inch deep. That's why I have the pencil. This pencil eraser has been used, but I can see it by these lines here, just about where a quarter inch would be. And it's great for making holes for things like tomatoes and peppers. So I'm gonna do a hole in each one. Now I have 72 holes here but it doesn't mean I'm gonna plant 72 seeds. In fact, most of these holes, I'm gonna put two or three seeds in. Now that might seem like a waste, but consider how much you're gonna end up planting for tomato plants. One plant might cost you three dollars, or for a six pack, they might charge you 550 or 650 for one six pack of tomato plants. This pack of seeds costs 199. So putting two or three seeds in each hole is a great value. And that pencil that I used earlier, it's gonna come in real handy because most years I put seeds in and unless I mark them down, I'm gonna forget. I might say I'm gonna remember, but if you're like me, you're gonna to forget too. So just mark them down. That way you know what's what because as they are coming up, you may not be able to tell exactly what type of plant it is until it starts getting bigger. Guarantee it. My teacher always said my handwriting was chicken scratch, but this will do until I get inside and put it on my computer. Now the first set of seeds are my early girl tomatoes. My next set of seeds are the Cherokee purple tomatoes I got from Mitt Gardner. These are some of the most flavorful tomatoes I've ever had, and they grow them every year. Here's another Mitt Gardner tomato 
42 day tomato and golden nugget tomatoes a sweet pepper a mix of colors big gem a medium hot chili pepper a hot cayenne pepper great for sandwiches mixes also for pepper sauce gotta have some jalapeno peppers for sandwiches or even for making jalapeno pepper is it jalapeno poppers and banana peppers sweet So here are my trays, my peppers, my tomatoes. Now, now the next step in this process is putting some more of the seed starting mix over the peppers and tomatoes. Very light coating. They may have noticed it's one thing I didn't mention fertilizer. These seeds, all seeds have everything they need to germinate, they don't need fertilizer. So, my seed starting mix didn't have fertilizer in it. And I'm not going to add any fertilizer to them. I didn't put anything in those last two rows there. That's why those holes are still out there. But everything else is covered. Covered lightly. Now one great thing about the seed starting mix is it's very light and fluffy. These seeds don't really react very well when just planted in basic dirt. That's why I'm not using topsoil. That's why I'm not using garden soil. There's too much stuff in those for these seeds to germinate properly, or at least easily. You want to give your seeds the best chance you can give them, so seed starting mix works. Now obviously there are a few more steps with this. And one step that I haven't mentioned yet is water. And the funny thing about water, it's not just about putting water in the tray, but it's about how you put the water in the tray. Since you have all these small seeds, one mistake you don't want to make is to pour water over it because that could move the seeds off from where they are and prevent them from germinating. You don't want them to go too far deep. You don't want them to be flushed up. You don't. So the process goes like this. You take the tray. You push it to the side like that. Add water down here. Preferably warm water because peat moss absorbs water better, quicker if it's warm. So I added a lot of water to that and now all I need to do is set the tray back inside the other tray and let the water absorb from the bottom up. But that's the best way to water these seeds. And the good thing is you'll never have to water them again because you have your greenhouse. The next step in the process is a heat mat. Now most heat mats are cut to a standard size which will fit under under your standard tray like so it goes the full length of the tray now this heat net will provide all this heating necessary to get your seeds to the proper germinating temperature now most seeds will germinate in temperatures between 70 
and 85 degrees. So the heat mats are designed to get it into that temperature range. Now, now my heat mat is pretty basic, just like most people tend to use. But there are some heat mats that actually have a temperature gauge. It tells them what temperature the, the heat mat is getting to. Which could come in handy, but now with the heat mats that I use, and I do have three of them, none of them have a temperature gauge on it. And I've done very well as far as getting my CDs heated up so they germinate well. So I wouldn't be overly concerned of which one you get. If you want to get the better one with the temperature gauge, go ahead. One thing you notice is once you get the heat mat plugged in and it starts heating things up, you notice that your water evaporates up into the greenhouse and of course it creates a greenhouse effect. So once you've watered it, you should never have to water it again. Because let's face it, these seeds are going to be here 7 to 10 to maybe 14 days. Now when you see that some of your seeds have started to sprout, you don't want to automatically unplug the heat mat. And you definitely don't want to take this off. The best way to do this, since some have germinated and some haven't, get something to lift up your greenhouse one or two inches so that some of the heat dissipates but some of the heat is still retained so the seeds that have not germinated yet can still continue to feel that effect. And once most of them have germinated, then you want to take this off and at that point you will want to unplug the heat mat because you don't want to stress out your seedlings because they don't need the heat. Your seeds need the heat. Your seedlings don't need it. If you have it in your house or in a greenhouse where the temperature is reasonable, you don't have to worry about giving them extra heat. They'll be fine. But now's the good part, because your mission isn't over. Because even though we started out with seeds, now we need to transition over to seedlings. And your seedlings need one very special thing. Proper lighting. So I purchased grow lights. And, th and these grow lights will help your seedlings do some very special developmental stages when they get their first leaves and when they get their first real leaves. Now there are many different brands of grow lights and all of them have different specifications. So when you buy your grow lights, just to read the directions over and follow them. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, hit that notification button, and hit that subscribe button. That way you can follow our further adventures when planting seeds, seedlings, and gardening. And also, a whole bunch of videos on fruit trees. Now let's get out there and get a little dirty.